Hello everybody and welcome to Car Confections. Today we're going to be going through our favorite compact sedans. This is a very popular segment, not just here in the U.S., but all across the world. And we have had the unique opportunity as car reviewers to be behind the wheel of nearly all of the options in the segment. So what we're going to do today is go through our favorite ones and the reasons why they are our favorite options. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's start out with number eight. That is gonna be the Kia Forte. This is an older model at this point, but it did get refreshed a couple years ago uh, to give it kind of the latest Kia look, and it has a lot going for it. First of all, as you know with Kias, you're gonna have a lot of value packed in, and this is indeed gonna be one of the most affordable options on this segment, which is a big thing when you're talking about compact sedans. It's very important to be affordable. Uh, you're also going to have some kind of nice luxury features because it is even available with ventilated seats, nice navigation screen, uh, and you also have a GT model if you want a little bit more power and a manual transmission. LX and LXS, 8 inch display, GT line and the GT, 10 and a quarter inch display. That's what we have, that's what you're looking at right now, of course. Um, and as you can see, very nice display, very large for this segment. You've got the latest Kia software, good responsiveness. Um, and you do have the built-in navigation system with the larger display. The other important thing to note is, of course, both have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities, but if you have the larger display, it's going to be a wired connection, and the smaller display, wireless connection. Uh, you're going to start out with that LX, which is now the base model for the Forte. It starts at $19,490. If you go up to the LXS, that's going to be at $19,990. And then the GT line that we're in today will start at $21,690. And then finally, if you opt for that GT Forte, you're going to be at $24,190. And moving on to number seven in the segment, that's gonna be the Nissan Sentra. This is a very stylish option in the segment. I love that it has a two-tone roof. It's one of my favorite, honestly, in terms of design. Um, additionally, it does have a lot of space. It actually has as much space as a Nissan Altima. That's your fun fact for the day. Um, so it's a very good option. It's also gonna have a lot of value in this segment. It's gonna be one of the cheaper options uh, that you can get on this list. So that's certainly something worth considering. Uh, one thing I do wanna point out though is there's not an upgraded engine, so that's a little bit disappointing. Now coming up to the cargo area, they have nicely integrated a handle under there. You just push that button and it pops right open. And then as far as the space itself is concerned, we're looking at 14.3 cubic feet of cargo capacity in the rear area of the Sentra, which does place it as one of the largest offerings in the segment once again. So the space figure for the Sentra is really something worth noting because it has a lot of space for the segment. is up to 60 miles per hour in the 2022 Nissan Sentra. Next up, let's go into our number six position. That's gonna to belong to the Volkswagen Jetta. This is our only German vehicle on yeah, the is. list. And as such, you know, German vehicles have certain advantages. This is no different. It has just kind of this nice solidity that Germans are known for, nice engineering precision. Um, and it all is also going to be offering a GLI model, which has a powerful turbocharged engine and a manual transmission, just like with that Forte offering. Another thing we both like is that it has very classy style that kind of reminds you of an Audi. I also just like the side profile in general. I think it gives me a lot of Audi-esque vibes, and I think that's also going to continue when you look at the rear design of the Jetta. I think this <laughs> this is really always looked like an Audi A4 to me, and I think that continues. And moving on to number five on this list, it's actually going to be the world's most popular vehicle, the Toyota Corolla. Uh, they've sold, I believe, over 50 million of these Corollas, um, which Crazy. is astonishing. <laughs> I mean, that's 
absolutely absurd. Um, but the reason why is because it's a very good product. Um, it has the signature Toyota reliability. The hybrid model offers amazing fuel economy. You also do have a stylish hatchback offering as well. Um, so really there's a Corolla for everyone. Um, the reason it hasn't landed a little bit further up on this list would probably be because the interior is a little bit cheaper uh, than some of the other options that we're gonna talk about in the coming list. Now taking a look up here at our door trim, we do have a nice leather material through here. As you can see, we got that red accenting that runs over here in the piano black around the four fully automatic windows. All of the top part of this door trim is going to be soft touch as well. As we go to the upper dash, all of this is also going to be a nice soft touch plastic. Feels nicely put together. We have a leatherette material through here with a stitching detail. As we come down to the middle here, the only part that's going to be hard touch is actually just along this console here. Now, as far as your fuel economy, Drew is mentioning how efficient this hybrid is and how it's able to achieve that fuel economy. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So we're looking at 48 mpg combined for the hybrid all-wheel drive. So that new model that you have the option of getting 48 mpgs. Um, that is exceptional fuel economy, guys. I mean, you're going to be saving so much money if you own one of these Corolla hybrids. Um, and if you go for a front-wheel drive, it's actually rated at 47 combined. So I, I don't know if that's a EPA typo or something, but front-wheel drive model actually is rated a little bit lower, uh, but both are going to be exceptionally good fuel economy. All right, things are getting tighter here and we've made it to the fourth spot on our list. This is gonna to belong to the Hyundai Elantra. So one of the things that worth noting is that for the upcoming 2024 model year, the Elantra is gonna be getting a design refresh, gonna be freshened up on the exterior and the interior, but it's still gonna keep the same core elements that we really like about it. Those things include that it has a hybrid offering it has actually several different offerings. You can go all the way up to an inn, which sounds absolutely insane. It's probably the cheapest, best sounding vehicle on the entire market because yeah. it's absolutely insane and great performance vehicle. But of course it's practical as well. So you have a good affordable price tag and you also have a very long warranty with complimentary maintenance for three years. So there's just a lot of things that really appeal to people. So there we are accelerating up to 60 miles per hour in the 2023 Hyundai Elantra. To be fair, we're going up a pretty steep hill, yeah. but you know, acceleration feels perfectly adequate for this category of vehicle. We are in the standard engine. You've got a lot of different powertrain choices when it comes to the Elantra. So this is the two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. It has 147 horsepower, 132 pound feet of torque. Um, you continue to have the availability of getting the inline model with the 1.6 turbocharged four cylinder that's going to give you 201 horsepower instead. Um, and then, of course, you've got hybrid options. You have the full on crazy in model. Yep. So, like I said, you've got a ton of different choices depending on um, which one you want. Hopefully, we'll review the in and the hybrid model separately um, coming up. And we made it to our top three. You're probably wondering what eked out all the other ones. Well, Number three is going to be the Mazda 3. Wow, I <laughs> kind of made that work, didn't we? Um, <laughs> it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't on purpose. We didn't do that <laughs> just because. But uh, the Mazda 3 is really an amazing vehicle for the segment. First of all, I think it looks really, really good. But secondly, the cabin and the level of luxury that you get inside it really is an entry level luxury vehicle to be entirely honest, mm -hmm. especially if you go into the higher end trim levels, you get features that none of the other rivals have. Uh, you have a turbo engine option and it just drives phenomenally. In typical Mazda fashion, you have to appreciate the driving dynamics of the Mazda 3 and it just, it's one of the most solid options in the segment. Now, it didn't land higher because the technology in some of the Mazda products are a little bit behind some of the other rivals that we're just about to mention. With that out of the way, let's talk about the design. Of course, this three hatch has a very aggressive 
look, especially when you choose the turbo, that's gonna black out this grill, give you this very aggressive look to it. Of course, you've got the black mesh in the inside, and then you'll notice down here at the very bottom, wow, we have a really large front spoiler. This is gonna be on just the Turbo Premium Plus model. So this is gonna signify you have gone for the top dog. And as we go up here to the display, uh, this is what that's going to look like. As you can see, it is quite distant from me. That's because it is not a touchscreen. There is no way that you can reach that. And if you did, you can't touch it. Uh, this is gonna be exclusively controlled via the controller down below that I was showing you earlier. Um, that being said, once you get used to using this, it's very easy. They've structured the infotainment system to be very easy to navigate. You don't have to really spend much time thinking about the different functions. You just have these five main sections here on the home screen. Top two time here. Second place, that's gonna be the all new Toyota Prius. That's right, that's the new sexy Prius. <laughs> uh, I never thought this would be on the top of no, our list. No, definitely not. Previously, the Prius was very easy to ignore um, and make fun of, but frankly, this new model is not just more attractive, but it also nails a lot of things people would be looking for in a compact sedan. First of all, you can't talk about Prius without the fuel economy, up to 56 miles per gallon combined, and that's before you even get into the plug-in hybrid, which gets even better fuel economy. Yeah. Secondly, it has a lot of space. It is actually a hatchback, even though it has the shape of a sedan, so you have a lot more cargo capacity than some of the things on this list. And it also has surprisingly good driving dynamics as well, which we were both impressed with yeah. while we tested it out over a week, not too long ago. Of course, the entire rear area opens up because this is a Prius after all. And as far as the space back here, we're looking at 20.3 cubic feet of cargo capacity for this model. Um, that's going to be a little bit less than the previous version of the Prius. But if you're comparing this Prius Prime to the previous Prius Prime, it's actually going to be slightly more cargo capacity, even though both the Prime and the regular hybrid have the exact same cargo capacity for this new model. Now, we don't have an exact exact figure with the seats folded. Uh, they do fold 60-40 split and as you can see uh, you can reach up there and fold them pretty easily. Um, makes for a good amount of space. The previous generation was around 50 cubic feet so I'd say you're going to be sitting at maybe uh, 45 cubic feet as a maximum. And that's 60. Wow. All right. Yeah, so this Prius Prime in particular is uh, definitely pretty quick. Toyota says the 0 to 60 on this is 6.6 seconds. So like we said earlier, this does qualify as the fastest Prius ever. So you're probably were thinking that it was gonna go from like 20 and a half seconds to <laughs> 19 and a half seconds. But no, this is actually legitimately pretty quick. And it's time for number one in the segment you probably might have already guessed it at this point because it is a big name. It's the Honda Civic. The Honda Civic has consistently been the very top of the segment because it just offers a lot of really amazing things for that price tag. Now, uh, first of all, we have an upcoming hybrid model, which was honestly our biggest gripe about the Honda mm -hmm. Civic before was that the hybrid didn't exist. Now we have that coming up in the next year. So stay tuned for information on that coming up. But we do have a Civic Type R, we have a Civic SI, we have the hatchback version, we have manual transmission options with an amazing gearbox yes, throughout the whole lineup i mean this car has pretty much everything you're looking for the hatchback is super practical the technology is also very good especially if you get into the top end trim levels with the wireless carplay wireless android auto uh, the honda civic it just is a really phenomenal package not to mention it also has a lot of space for this segment yes it's very spacious the driving dynamics are great uh, if, you, if you guys know about the acura integra the cabin is nice enough that they really didn't change much when they changed it into an Acura and it's hard to even complain about it. I mean, it yeah. is a really very nicely executed cabin. Like Mason said, and there's just, when you have a product that you can't really come up with things to complain about, you know that they really nailed it. And it is all available to you guys for a pretty affordable price as well. So that's why it is our number one compact sedan. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look next at the display. So just like with the audio system, uh, the display situation does have a touring exclusive. 
This is going to be a 9 inch display here on the touring trim level, 7 inch display on your two lower trim levels. Um, as far as functionality, there is an important difference between them as well. Um, right now, I'm in the Android Auto interface, as you can see. I'm in the Google Maps, and uh, I am running this wirelessly, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah, but let's go ahead and get into the dynamics of this, because Mason kind of started to talk about it, but they are stellar. Uh, frankly, the Civic has always been just right up there as the with the Mazda 3 basically as the best and this here it's even better than before I mean it seems crazy that they've actually made this better but it really just stands far apart from the appliance competitors that are mostly out there well guys that's it for today's video we hope you found this countdown to be insightful like we said we get to experience firsthand all these vehicles and we hope that putting them in kind of an order will help you collect your thoughts a little bit if you're shopping in this segment we also have full in-depth reviews of all these models and their variants so whatever specific thing you're looking at or interested in in this segment We've got a video just for you, so head over to our channel and check that out. And that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed watching or found this video helpful, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. By doing so, you help us to make more videos like this, as well as our full reviews, comparisons, and other video types. So we really appreciate the support. And if you're already a subscriber, you make this all possible. So thank you so much. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.